Hello, and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Well, except for today, because we have reached a triumphant 14,000 subscribers, and we are going to celebrate as is customary by featuring some more of your best channel comments. Enjoy! All right, we're going to begin this special by featuring one of my many daily threats, on this occasion coming from Max AUS, or Max Oss. He's from Australia, but that'll become apparent. Hey, Grand Line Review, come get a bunning snag with me. Turn it into a cute little date, or I will feed you to the bin chickens. And you know I do enjoy a good bunning snag, but something tells me this is a trap. So bring on your bin chickens, I will defeat each and every one of them. Next up we have Jamie Bocanegra expressing the feelings of every person who has ever been featured in one of these videos. What the fuck? I was so surprised that my shitty comment made it here. I know, right? Of all of the shit comments on my videos, yours was one of the least shit. You should be so proud. However, someone who should be a bit less proud of himself is Deckhead. Or Deckhead? Deckhead. I'd consider getting a DF just so I can have fun with my penis. And I'm just sad to hear that you're unable to have fun with your penis currently. Maybe try some Viagra, yeah? So I recently did a top five feeble old men in one piece list. Brilliant list if I do say so myself. But Cage is here, believes I forgot someone. What about yourself? Ha! 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 Fuck you, Cages. Moving on, we have some usual madness from It's Mr. Bubba. Would you name your kid after me? And look, Bubba, I have to say, it's pretty unlikely that I would, unless I wanted them to grow up to be a burly prison bitch. Next up, we have a complaint, I think, from John John. I'm still black. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and let my wife take this one. Me too! I'm black too. Hey, buddy. John John. Little Johnny John John. Johnny Johnny 44 Minute John John Johnson. And now here we have Krabs Krabs, who seems to have misinterpreted my entire arc review on Marine Food. Marine is so rich that it's having a Ford. That's right, the budget for the entirety of the Marine organization is just enough to afford one of the cheapest brands of cars in the world. But let's feature some more complaints now. And here we have Balthazar Samra, who has an interesting criticism of my One Piece 101 on Kobe. This is the first time I'm seeing one of your video, but this is a resume that you did. You didn't explain the character or what he apports or can apport to the story. All right, this is a weird one. Usually I just point out some horrible English, have a jolly good laugh and move on. But this guy has used the word apport twice, meaning that this isn't just some spelling mistake or autocorrect. He genuinely believes that it is an English word that I should know. And wow, actually, would you look at that? A port is indeed a word, meaning a material object produced supposedly by occult means, especially at a seance. And uh, sure, why not? I apologize for not detailing what kind of things Kobe could produce by occult means in the story, but let me try to make amends by telling you the true story of how Kobe joined the Marines. Kobe was a young lad like any other who applied to become a Marine and secured a job interview. Unfortunately, the interviewer was Admiral Akainu, and he immediately stated, all you've done is provide me with a resume. You didn't explain your character or what you apport or can apport to the Marines. Kobe, like most English speakers, will have never heard this word before. So like a typical millennial, he whips out his phone mid job interview to look it up. And then confused, Kobe begins to draw a pentagram this displeased Akainu. Thankfully, Shanks stepped in or things would have not gone very well for Kobe at all. Anyway, that was long-winded, but I hope Balthazar is now satisfied. And if not, fuck off. Moving on, we have Franco the Shone Man. You are the only One Piece YouTuber that is not a virgin and you're married. So what kind of black magic did you use? Well, Franco, let's just say I apported something and leave it at that because it's time for the photoshopped US president of the week featuring special guest, the Sly Silver Fox. This week we are featuring a certain president photoshopped all over the cast of Twilight. Sly Silver Fox, if that is indeed your real name, what would you label this group? Bush people. Thank you, Loro. But now it's time to get down to business. Last time you were all asked a disturbingly important question from Andy Royd 16 and that was, why don't Sun Jis pants get damaged when he uses his fire kick? Well, Droid, we have our answers. We're going to start with Koryosami and Mark Neal, who both gave word for word the exact same answer. Because, because they're, they're hot, hot pants. pants. Although Mark Neal used a full stop, so he is technically more correct. But now let's move to an alternate take from Mr. Damako Endurance. 
because the fire around his leg is of the male gender and only wants to burn the pants off a Vince Smoke if it's Reiju. Unfortunately for the fire, she doesn't wear pants, so it never gets the opportunity. Mr. Damako proposing the very interesting suggestion that fire has a gender. But Aaron Big One seems to have a more meta reasoning behind his answer. Sanji's trousers do not get damaged because same that all Logia clothing do not get damaged turn into fire or ice. It's because you would see their wee willy winkies out and the show would go from a 12 age rating to a 15 or 18 age rating. That's fair enough, I guess Sanji can't just whip it out at 9.30am on a Sunday in Japan. But let's have one final theory from Z Thaloose. His pants never catch fire because right before he activates Diablo Jumba, he pees himself in order to quell the flames. Now, if anything, I'm pretty sure that would enhance the flame. So maybe that's how he activates Diablo Jumba to begin with. You know, start spinning around for some friction, pees down his leg, and when the spark happens, bam, he ignites. Mystery solved. I mean, not the mystery that we wanted to solve, but hey, we'll just go ahead and say that wraps this up. So let's move on to our next curious inquiry, this time put forward to us by James Cataldo. If there are devil fruits, are there devil vegetables? So I look forward to your answers to that. But that pretty much does it for this edition of the best channel comments. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting independent creators, then also feel free to check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.